What's going on guys? This is Alex here from 814EC and I am back again with another Finch review. Uh, if you guys saw yesterday's video, you know that I did the review on the Cimarron and today I am here to do my review on the 1929. Uh, so same story, you know, if you, if you guys have seen yesterday's video, you guys know that Finch did send me this and the Cimarron to check out uh, and to review and to keep. Um, again, shout out to Spencer and shout out to Finch for taking the time to you know, respond to my email and for being so generous um, and for just taking, you know, a chance on a very small YouTuber and for sending him some knives. So I'm not going to go into the whole backstory because you guys, I'm sure you guys saw it yesterday. Basically, if you haven't, go watch that video and come back to this one. Um, so I just have to thank Finch again. You guys are awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see the new models that are coming out in the summer. Um, I'm pumped for the Devil's Finger, as I continue to say, but it just looks so good, guys. So... This is a review of the Finch 1929. Now this was, before Spencer had sent me some stuff, this was probably the knife that I would have bought. This exact spec in this micarta. Um, this was just the knife that I kind of was drawn to the most and it seemed just like the coolest, I guess. Um, so if you guys saw my unboxing, you know that I pulled the Cimarron out first, and then I got this out, and I, when I saw what it was on the outside of the box, I was just like so happy that it's like Spencer read my mind when he was sending it out to me, and I was just, I'm so glad that he chose this as one of the ones that sent it to me, because it's, it's really good, guys. Um, I'm, I have to say, I think I, I think I like this one a little bit better than the Cimarron. Just because I like the overall design and like the aesthetic of it, maybe a little bit better. But in the summer one's a fantastic knife. You guys saw yesterday that my review of it was very very positive. But I just the 1929 might get it by a hair. So uh, jumping, you know, right in materials. This has a uh, 154 cm blade, as you guys can see there. It says model 1929. Over here you have Finch, right there. And this is a uh, kind of a clip point or like Barlow style blade, I think it's called. Um, and it's a full flat grind. And it's, you know, has a, it's very thin behind the edge. Uh, blade stock is, you know, relatively kind of right in the middle, I'd say, between being like really thin and kind of on the stockier side. Um, if I had to say one thing about this knife that I didn't, uh, like, that kind of bugged me, or I, I didn't agree with, uh, it didn't come very sharp out of the box. The Cimarron did, but um, the 1929 didn't. That was something that I might have been, I was a little bit disappointed in, um, but I threw it on the, the sharpener that I have and put a little bit better of an edge on it. So that was just, I don't, I don't know if that was... QSP's uh, kind of part, or probably that, because I'm sure Finch doesn't uh, have the time to quality check every single one of their knives, but uh, that was just something that, it, out of both knives, that's probably the only thing that I can really, like, negatively say about them, um, but yeah, like I said, the Cimarron came very, very sharp, this one just came a little bit kind of on the dollar side, but it's okay, I know it happens with knives, so... But I, one reason why I like this knife so much is because I just love the kind of Barlow slash clip point style, you know, of this blade. I think it looks really, really cool. This is a flipper knife, and it has the same, oh, the Cimarron right here, actually. It has the same flipper tab as the Cimarron, which is cool. Basically the same. Uh, this is in... Uh, this really nice dark denim or black denim uh, micarta. I'm trying to catch the light. There we go. That has patinaed nicely uh, a little bit to my my oils for my hands. It is a bolster lock. It has this, this stainless steel up here from the bolster on both sides. And then it does have a titanium deep carry pocket. Not deep carry pocket, excuse me. Uh, non deep carry pocket, but very similar to the uh, Cimarron. I think this. this uh, Apocalypse looks really cool on the overall design of the knife and I normally carry this in my fifth pocket so it's not like I it, it's not my shirt or my sweatshirt covers it most of, or basically every time so it's not like I have a bunch of knives sticking in my pocket that I have to worry about um, and that's 
I'll, I'll talk about that later, about this being a really good fifth pocket carry. Um, but like I said, it is a bolster lock here. Uh, skeletonization going on. Nothing really happening there. Full steel liners. And I just, I really like the overall aspect and aesthetic of this. I, I use the word aesthetic a lot, but I just think it looks really cool. It's kind of the, in that modern traditional, uh, it's like a modern traditional knife, but has kind of, or it's a traditional knife, but with modern materials and stuff like that, I guess is how you would kind of calculate that. Yeah, I don't think I missed any other materials. Oh, also, I guess you have the... Uh, uh, Finch logo here that is a loom and every one of their knives that glows in the dark, which is really cool And I think that's everything I don't think I missed anything uh, Next we're gonna go over action move to action This thing flips really really well It's very snappy kind of has that same sort of sound the Cimarron makes Just very, very responsive. I love the flipper on both of these knives. Um, it's just very, it's, sh it's shaped very well for being able to open. You can really push button it. Let's see if I can push button it. Yeah, push button it will open it and then light switch will obviously open it with a little bit more force. Um, but the detent is very good. It's tuned very well for this knife. Now for the closing action, like I said, I think for the third time it is a bolster lock, which this was my, or this is my only bolster lock that I have in the collection. Uh, I really, I don't completely understand the difference between a bolster lock and a frame lock, I guess. Actually, I take that back. Yes, I do. The frame lock is the whole frame moves over. The bolster lock has, um, you can see the micarta stays the same, but there's a the steel liner moves. So forget I said that. I just kind of eureka myself. So I, I do understand the difference now. But I kind of like the how the bolster lock works. Um, I like that it's just a little tab up here instead of like the whole frame. I, I I don't know. I just have grown to really appreciate how it works. But you, uh, it's very similar to the Cimarron. It drops and hits my nail, and I just shake it shut. It all kind of just depends on where the flipper tab, if it completely clears my finger and goes in, um, like that, one shake, or if I hit it my nail, I can still do one shake right there, but sometimes it's two or so, um, but yeah. Again, I did apply some uh, KPL to this and the Cimarron like the week I got them. So it could be getting a little dry. So the action, I guess, could be a little better than it is. But I think as they both stand right now, it's it's not definitely not a bad action. Um, it's not a complete drop shut knife, but I, I don't think it needs to be. I like how it just falls, hits my nail, and I just shake it shut one time. Uh, so... Action's good. No complaints there. Next, we're going to go over ergos. And as you can see, this knife is obviously very small. But somehow, I, I have a, you know, a size large, I think, hand. Between large and extra large. Somehow, I can fit all four fingers on there. My pinky just has enough room to fit on there. Um, there's no jimping up top. There is jimping on the, the flipper tab, obviously. But, yeah, I can get all four fingers on there. I get locked in pretty well. Um, I can, you know, I definitely have good control of this knife. I don't feel like it's my, like, pinky's going to slip off or anything like that. Um, just the, for how small it is, it, it feels a lot bigger in the hand, kind of. Because it is a little bit of a chunky guy, the you know, with this, the scales and the steel liners and stuff like that. But my main grip is saber grip, and it fits very, very, in the well, very, very well in the hand. Um, hammer grip fits well, but really any other, any other grip you're going to use with this knife, I don't think you would. I guess reverse draw grip or reverse draw cut uh, works fine, 
but you're not going to be using this knife in like tactical situations or anything like that. So um, saber grip works very, very well. I like that there's no jibbing up here. I'm usually okay with jibbing, but I like how smooth it is. Um, and I can just get a really nice sort of, not sort of, a, a grip on it. Um, I love when knives are small like this, but I can still fit you know, my, all, all my fingers on there. Uh, I can still get a whole grip on it. Because uh, I tend to be, you know, kind of a smaller knife kind of guy. Which is kind of weird because I'm like 6'4". Like, I'm, I'm a kind of a bigger dude. Uh, so most bigger guys tend to, you know, go towards bigger knives. But I'm kind of the opposite. I go towards smaller knives for the most part. Because um, I think if you look, I definitely have more smaller blades than larger blades in my collection. Um, and so this, this fits right at home. Grip, very good. Uh, get a good purchase. Feels very good. The, I guess we're gonna jump right into Ergos because I was just gonna talk about Ergos. The knife is very, very neutral. It's, it, it is skinny at the front and it does get a little bit fatter towards the end, but it's all very rounded off nicely. There's no sharp edges on this thing at all. The steel's very nicely done. The micarta is very nicely done. Um, so ergos are very good. Hey guys, sorry about that again. I don't know what's been acting up with my phone lately or the, the app that I use to film. Um, last couple of videos I've been trying to film it like cuts out uh, like the one unboxing I did of my loaners from Brian, like the McNeese and the Whamic. It cut out like right in the middle of it. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So hopefully this, you know, works for the rest of this video. Um, fingers crossed. I was just uh, getting done with my ergos kind of category and I was going to jump into carry. So we're just going to do that. Uh, here with the Finch 1929, we do have a pocket clip that is titanium, not deep carry, but looks very good on the knife. Um, and like I stated earlier in the video, I primarily carry this in my fifth pocket. I think that this is the perfect size for a fifth pocket knife. It's very small, but also very capable if you need it. Because like I said, uh, just in the last category of Ergos, I can fit all four fingers on here. Um, and it's it's still a very usable blade. So I think it's like perfect for throwing in your fifth pocket of your jeans. Um, most of the time, I only carry this knife because I'm not really much of a... I don't really tend to carry two knives on me because the, the uh, tasks that I do with my knives, I don't really need a huge blade to do. So uh, this is just, I sometimes it's easy to forget that it's in your fifth pocket because it's, it's very lightweight, it's very small, very uniform kind of package, uh, just very discreet. Um, and I, I, th I think it's perfect for my needs and for throwing in the fifth pocket. Um, I have carried it in my normal right pocket of my jeans, um, and I think once or twice in shorts. And it still it still carries very, very well. Um, like I said, it's a very small package, very, you know, just, just small. Uh, carries very, very well. But for my personal opinion and for my personal needs, it fits right at home in my fifth pocket of my jeans. And it sees a lot of time there. So, carry is good. Uh, like I said, the only thing, you know, I guess we're going to jump right into price point. I believe these knives go for 120 ish. I think 120 on Finch's website. Uh, again, I'll leave a link to their Instagram page and directly to uh, the website with the listing of the 1929. I believe they're 120, and I think it's worth it. Um, I think. The build is very, very good. The materials are awesome. Uh, the blade steel, I think this is my first you know, experience with 154CM. It's kind of cool because I've been experiencing newer blade steels uh, recently with some of the knives I've been getting in. Um, but you know, so far, once I added a little bit better of an edge to it, it's worked fine. Um, and again, that's the only thing that I can really complain about uh, from either this or the Cimarron is that the, the blade, the edge on this came kind of dull. But again, I think that's more QSP's part uh, than Finch. I don't think Finch really didn't intend to do that, obviously. So that was just something that I noticed, but um, I do think this knife is worth it. 
Uh, you guys know I like to kind of talk about if I think the knife is worth the price or not. And most often times, or more often than not, I do think the knife is worth the price that I have in. At least any of the knives that I have in my personal collection because I bought them, so I do think that they're worth the price. Um, but even though this and the Cimarron were given to me, uh, I think $120 is very fair for this. Uh, Finch is definitely creating kind of a sweet spot for themselves in the knife marketing and the knife community now because they have you know good models out uh obviously i've only experienced the cimarron and the 1929 but i've heard good things about the runtley i've heard really good things about the holiday the ty uh, tycuna and tycuna i think there's just five right now unless i'm completely forgetting one but uh, i've heard good things about every single one of their knives and like i said they do have a lot coming in the pipeline um, I think they've teased like six new models that are going to come out uh, in the summer and in the fall. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, I know I'm excited for a couple of them, uh, including the Devil's Finger. I'm really, really pumped for that one, as I, I think I've said in like the last two or three videos. But back to price point, I think it's worth it. $120 for, you know, good micarta, a nice bolster lock nice titanium pod clip or just a really cool blade shape um good action from flipping and closing just an overall fantastic knife um, if you're in the market for you know a really good secondary or if you're like me and you don't have to carry huge knives all the time this is a really really good knife finch killed it with both this and the cimarron um so Again, shout out to you, Spencer, and shout out to Finch for just being such a generous and kind company and for really, you know, just taking, like, Ke I think what, what's Kevin always say? You don't know me from Adam. And that's kind of how, you know, Finch and Spencer operated. They just, I did say that I was, you know, a newer YouTube reviewer, and they were just like, okay, let's do it. Let's get some knives in this kid's hands, and that's exactly what they did. So, Finch, you have a fan for life in me. Um, I definitely planning adding more to the collection i uh, can't wait for the new models to come out like i continually say but i'm i'm just so pumped for the devil's finger like as soon as i saw that on their site i just kind of like looked at it for a few minutes and i was like this is sick because it's coming in either red linen micarta or like od not od green um like a forest ranger green type of micarta has like a wire pocket clip it just looks really really good like it it might be Obviously, I don't know until I get it in hand, but it might be, I might like it a little bit more than the 1929. Um, but as of right now, I love the 1929, I love the Cimarron, and I love Finch. So that's kind of all I have to say about these for today, guys. Um, I hope you, you know, found both Finch uh, reviews that I did informative. Like I said, if you're kind of on the fence about them, uh, I will leave a link to their Instagram and their website down below. Finch is very... How do I want to say this? They're very popular in uh, the knife YouTube realm right now because they're a newer company and their models are very attainable. And their Spencer is awesome and he sends knives to different reviewers. So they're very, you know, they want to get knives into people's hands. So there, there's a lot out there. And I would have to say that they're probably one of the, they're, they're very popular in the knife YouTube. Uh, they're just kind of everywhere uh really every reviewer that i uh i'm friends with or that i talk to or follow has done knives or done uh, reviews on finch knives so there's that um yeah i don't think i have really think anything else to say um i guess i thank you guys for stopping back in and for checking out my video and for checking out my channel i love you guys uh leave a link or leave a link Leave a uh, comment down below, you know, if you've checked out Finch, um, if you're kind of on the fence about him, or, you know, whatever about Finch. Just just leave a comment. I love talking to you guys. Um, it's one of my favorite parts about owning and having a YouTube channel is just the uh, communication I get from different types of people. And, again, I love this community. The knife community is amazing. Um, and, I yeah, I'm going to quit rambling. You guys know how this goes. I tend to ramble at the end of my videos, so... Again, thank you guys so much for stopping back in and for checking out my video. I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.